Welcome back to General Chemistry Mini Lecture Series, Lecture 13. Today we are going to go over the second part of our nomenclature, ionic compounds. This is actually a review of what we learned in the past. So we already know group 1A metals, they always just form one plus cations, no exception. Group 2A, 2 plus. Group 3A for aluminum always forms aluminum 3 plus, not the other ones in the uh, family. For these three transition metals, they also always just form one kite ion. Silver is always positive 1, zinc always positive 2, scandium is always positive 3. Most of the transition metals, they will form uh, more than one kind of ions without variable charges. So, but most of them, they have a 2 plus charge. You see, every one actually in this table, they have a, a 2 plus charge. The reason for that is uh, uh, they can easily lose the 2 of the S2 valence electrons. That's why they should have two plus kite ions. Since these transition metals they form kite ions with variable charges, then sometimes you need to know how to determine which charge are we talking about. Let's say iron 3 or iron 2, like in FeO. So then we determine the charge for iron based on the charge of oxide. Oxide most time carries two negative, therefore iron has to be two positive. So that's how you get the charge for those kite ions with variable charges. Kite ion name, yes, still the same as the metal's name. I say iron, we still use iron. However, we have some additions here. We'll write the charge using Roman numeral and put that in parentheses. Then we place the parentheses and the Roman numeral after the metal name. That's how we handle kite ions with variable charges. Now, naming binary ionic compounds, binary means only two types of ions. Step number one, the full name of metal is used first for transition metals, so make sure you use a Roman numeral in parentheses. Step number two, we'll use the stem or the root of the non-metal name, and then using IDE as a suffix, basically we just use the ion's name. So therefore, cut ion first, then the ion ion. Okay, let's work on one example, name, NABR, full name of the first metal, sodium. And then the ion of the second element, that's bromine, and then bromide. So therefore, the full name for NABR is simply sodium bromide. CO2O3, write down the for name of the metal, since this is a transition metal, we have to indicate the charge. How do we know it carries positive 3? Because we know oxide is negative 2. Negative 2 times 3, total negative 6. Then we need a positive 6. 6 divided by 2. Then for each CO kind of ion has to be 3 plus. And then followed by the anion's name, oxygen, then that's oxide. So therefore, cobalt-3 oxide. Let's work on a few more. Name the formula for the following ionic compounds. Ba3 and 2, let's look at the ions. Ba, that's a group 2A element, should always form 2 plus kind of ion. So for nitrogen right here, that has to be nitride. 
So therefore, it's barium nitride IDE. Calcium, again, that's a group 2A. Therefore, 2 plus cation. And chlorine is chloride. Each chloride carries negative 1. Therefore, it's a calcium chloride. Just make sure you understand. You see in ionic compounds, we don't use prefixes. So do you notice that? Prefixes are only used for molecular compounds. Kf, potassium, group 1A, metal. K plus, fluorine, so group 7A, or one of the halogens. So the ion is a fluoride, potassium fluoride. Iron, 2 plus. Again, how did you get the charge of 2? from the charge of the oxide. So therefore, iron 2 oxide. And here, copper. What's the charge for copper? Again, you determine that from the charge of sulfide. Oxygen and sulfur, they are in the same group. So therefore, the ice is a 2 minus. So therefore, copper actually is a 1, copper 1. So therefore, in the name, you have to write copper 1 sulfide. Now let's work on writing formula from the compounds formed between iron 3 and nitrogen. Okay, we are going to follow those five steps. First one, write the symbol for the metal kite ion. Iron 3, that has to be Fe3 positive. So that's a transition metal. Write the symbol for the non-metal ion and its charge. The group 5A already have five valence electrons gaining three electrons. It will have the octet configuration, so make that more stable and gaining three electrons, of course, 390. Now you put them together, write the formula, and then charges become the subscripts, so Fe3 and 3. But you have to remember how to reduce the subscripts to the smallest whole number ratio. Divide everything by 3, you have Fe n. And then you should check the sum of the charges of cation that cancel the sum of the n ion. Of course, that's a 3 positive, 3 negative. So the overall charge for the compound is zero. So therefore, the name is iron 3 nitride. Now let's do a few more examples. Calcium and oxygen. Calcium group 2A metal form only 2 plus cation. Oxide charges become subscripts and then reduce the subscripts to the smallest whole number ratio. So therefore, the formula should be CaO, and the name should be calcium oxide. Zinc and sulfur should be Zn2+, plus, although zinc is a transition metal, but it only forms 2 plus cation. And the sulfur is S2-, minus, as we just mentioned a while ago. So therefore, again, charge becomes subscripts, reduce ZnS, zinc sulfide. Aluminum and chlorine. So then you need to remember aluminum has to be Al3 plus, and chlorine, that's a, a halogen, always form negative one charge. So therefore, we have Al3 plus and Cl minus. Charges become the subscript of other ion, and this one's already in the smallest whole number ratio. So therefore, the name is simply aluminum chloride in this case. Now, write a formula for the following ionic compounds. Now, we do have names for the ionic compounds. Barium iodide, barium Ba2+, plus, group 2A metal. Iodide, that should be I-, minus, and then BaI2. Copper 1, oxide, copper 1 has to be Cu positive, 
oxide of course is too negative. Again, write down the formula, use the charge as the subscript for the other ion. Okay, now let's work on the compounds containing polyatomic ions. So remember we learned those are polyatomic ions in previous lecture. When you work on the name or formula for compounds containing polyatomic ions, you follow the same rule as for the binary ionic compound. Just in addition to that, we will use the name or the formula of the polyatomic ions. That's it. It's just for the ion ion, you have to use those polyatomic ion ions. Okay. Let's do some practice here. Name the following formulas. We have NH4Cl3. The first one is ammonium. NH4, the ion name is ammonium. This one should be ammonium and then chloride. Sodium. Sodium. That's acetate. You see? The polyatomic ion is acetate. So therefore, it should be sodium acetate. That's potassium carbonate. Carbonate. Potassium carbonate. Now, iron. That's iron 2 or iron 3. You determine that using the ion ion. Ion ion here is NO2, so which is a nitrite, negative 1. Then three of those, the iron has to be positive 3. So therefore, iron 3, nitride. Now, from name to formula. Calcium hydroxide. Calcium, group 2A. Metal, carry 2 positive charge. That's why the subscript for oxide actually is 2. Oxide, you see, is the name for the polyatomic ion OH. Zinc sulfate, zinc should be Zn, sulfate should be SO4. So zinc is too positive, sulfate is too negative, that's why it's just Zn SO4. Copper 1, hydrogen sulfide. Copper 1 for copper carries positive 1, and the hydrogen sulfide, hydrogen sulfide carries negative 1, that's why. You just simply write CuHSO3. The subscripts for copper is 1. The subscripts for the polyatomic ion is also just 1. If it's 1, you never write it. Magnesium phosphate. Magnesium, group 2A metal, always 2 plus. Phosphate is always 3 negative. So therefore, use the charge as a substrate for other ion. That's why you have Mg3, then PO4, parenthesis 2. Writing and naming formulas for ionic compounds with hydrates. What are hydrates? Hydrates are simply waters. Okay. So one water means one H2 unit. Now you see we can have copper 2, sulfate, and then we have five voters. Actually, we are going to need prefixes. What we learned from before, mono, one, two, deca, ten. In this one, you can have half voters. Then one half, we use a hemi, H-E-M-I, as the prefix. So therefore, we can name the compound first, just like what we learned copper 2, sulfate, and then following the prefix first, penta, and then just simply use the name hydrate to indicate waters. Therefore, this one should be copper sulfate 5 penta hydrate. Those water can be lost when they receive energy or get heated. Okay, so therefore, the hydrates can be lost. So the one with hydrates, we call them hydrate. The one without 
hydrates without waters, we call them anhydrous. Before heating, the one contains waters or the hydrates, they look blue. After heating, the waters are removed, so you see they look like more whitish or grayish. That's why actually the anhydrous are the materials used in desiccator to keep samples from gaining moisture. Because if there's any moisture, these ones would get those moisture first. That is one of the applications for compounds with hydrates. Now let's write the formula for these three hydrates. Sodium sulfate. So we write down the formula for sodium sulfate. Deca, which means 10, then H2O. And between the name and the hydrates, so we just simply use a dot connecting the two parts. Beryllium sulfate. Beryllium is a group 2A metal. 2 plus sulfate is 2 negative. Therefore, it's just simply BeSO4. Tetra, four water molecules. The bath salt. Many of you probably use this Epsom salt. It's actually magnesium sulfate heptahydrate. Magnesium sulfate and then 7H2O. And now let's uh, do uh, from formula to names. So that's beryllium nitrate tetrahydrate. Number two here, nickel. And we know that's transition metal. And we know each chloride carries negative one. Therefore, nickel has to carry a charge of 2 plus. So therefore, nickel, 2. And then an ion's name, chloride, prefix, 6, which is hexahydrate. Nickel 2 chloride hexahydrate. And this one, that should be called calcium sulfate, 1 half right here. We call that hemi. So calcium sulfate, hemi. Hydrate. This is the end of lecture 13 quiz. So that's quiz number one. Select the correct name for the ionic compound K3N. What is K? Potassium. What is N? Nitrogen. Okay, let's look at that. Potassium 3. Potassium is group 1A element. It's not transition. Whenever you see this, that means a transition metal, so therefore A is not the correct answer. Potassium nitrogen, the first part is correct, but nitrogen, for the second part, you always have to use the ion's name, and nitrogen is the element's name, so B is out. C, potassium nitride, potassium is correct, Nitride is the ion's name for nitrogen. That's also correct. Then what's wrong with the D? D is also potassium nitride, but prefixes used, prefixes are not needed for ionic compounds. So that's why D is incorrect. You work on the remaining ones and also homework problems. And I will see you in lecture 14.